CBC 13 Eyewitness News at 11. Now, breaking news. That breaking news happening right now on the I-10 Katy Freeway. This is near Houston Avenue. You see that 18-wheeler right there. That's what it involves, involving a truck carrying these spools, hitting the Houston Avenue bridge. TxDOT confirming a heavy truck struck that bridge, and crews are on the scene to inspect it as they work to clear the scene. The problem, of course, is that there is a long backup as a result. Uh, that bridge, by the way, about 14 feet high, many semis carrying loads that are just too tall and hit that bridge. So you can see the backup as a result. We're going to get to that traffic. Much of it is being diverted on I-45, but if you can, just avoid the area altogether because it is a massive backup. We'll give you more details momentarily. All right, we have more breaking news now from Galveston. The county judge is holding a news conference soon to announce a return to COVID-19 restrictions that were in place over the summer. This comes after the state notified the county that it had reached the threshold for COVID-19 cases and that it was required to tighten restrictions. That could mean that the closure of bars could happen, suspension of elective surgeries, and limits on customers and businesses. We have a crew there headed to the news conference. We'll bring you all the updates throughout the day and, of course, on ABC13.com and our streaming apps. All right, now to that long overdue relief bill that is now on the way to the president's desk. Much needed money could be on its way soon to you. ABC's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Schulze live now in Washington with a look at what lawmakers were able to agree on. This is after months and months of a stalemate, Elizabeth. That's right. Months and months of stalemate, failed negotiations, but finally lawmakers coming together to approve this much, much needed economic relief. It is part of a larger government spending bill worth more than $2.3 trillion. Help is finally on the way for American households and businesses struggling to make ends meet during the pandemic. And not a moment too soon. The House and Senate overwhelmingly approving $900 billion in COVID relief. The American people have waited long enough. The bill extends emergency jobless benefits and an eviction moratorium that were set to expire at the end of the year. It adds $300 in weekly federal unemployment benefits and provides nearly $300 billion in aid to small businesses, plus more than $8 billion for distributing the vaccine. And it includes a one-time payment of up to $600 for individuals making up to $75,000 per year. So a family of four could receive $2,400. The Treasury Secretary saying those stimulus checks could show up in Americans' bank accounts as soon as next week. Much needed relief, but for some, too little, too late. I personally think it's long past due. $600 isn't going to help a lot of the average Americans just trying to get by. The COVID relief deal was months in the making and comes attached to a $1.4 trillion spending bill to keep the government funded through September. Up against the clock with government funding set to run dry, lawmakers raced to pass a one-week stopgap spending bill to buy more time for the larger piece of legislation to go into effect. President Trump approved that temporary extension and is now expected to sign the bigger spending bill, including COVID relief, into law. President-elect Joe Biden applauding the deal, while Democrats insist more aid will need to be approved under the Biden administration. Today is a good day, but it is certainly not the end of the story. Now, some Americans will start receiving those stimulus checks by direct deposit in their accounts before the new year. And the bill has set a deadline for the IRS to get the payments out by January 15th. Reporting live in Washington, Elizabeth Schulze, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, many are saying it's about time. Thank you, Elizabeth. We appreciate that report. All right, see how much money you'll be receiving. We put a stimulus check calculator on our website. Just answer a few questions and you'll get your estimate immediately. It's all right there on abc13.com. But the bottom line, most Americans getting 600 bucks each. And of course, that includes children as well. All right, well, the nation's top infectious disease expert is on his way to be protected against COVID-19. Dr. Anthony Fauci and other Trump administration officials receiving Moderna's version of the vaccine. Fauci will get his second shot in a few weeks. There he is sitting at the chair getting his first shot. The National Institutes of Health played a big role in developing the vaccine. This morning on Good Morning America, Dr. Fauci said the vaccine will reach a majority of Americans by summer. I think we'll start in earnest vaccinating the general population somewhere at the end of March, the beginning of April. It may take two, three, four months or more 
before you get everyone vaccinated that wants to be vaccinated. So I think that's the difference in the variability that you're hearing among people. We're really all, all right, so talking about when the vaccine will be distributed to most Americans, and that is by the end of March. Dr. Fauci also repeated his plea for Americans to tone down and have smaller Christmas celebrations. Happening right now, the Texas Medical Center is updating us on the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is a news conference happening. Officials, uh, hospitals in the Med Center began administering the Pfizer version of the vaccine earlier this month. Now, if you want to watch this news conference, we're streaming it right now on our website, abc13.com or ABC 13 News apps, which includes, of course, the apps and the favorite streaming devices. ABC 13 reporter Marla Carter monitoring the news conference as well. She'll have updates throughout the day. Again, the medical center talking about the distribution of the Pfizer vaccine. Authorities had their hands full in chasing some stubborn suspects. Three different chases in a period of four hours. This morning, some of those suspects and several innocent people who couldn't get out of the way are now in the hospital. The first chase happened just after 9 o'clock last night. A suspect running from police when he crashed into a second car at the intersection of Westheimer and Briar Park. A woman in the other car is in critical condition. The suspect and his passenger also in the hospital. And just by the sound of that, you know that he is traveling fast. The chase on Houston's north side happening about midnight. Suspect was going as fast as he could on a damaged tire. He's smoking. He's got one tire out right now. So eastbound 610 coming up to Hardy Toll Road. And that's the result. You saw that fire there. Moments later, the suspects exited Irving and crashed. The car burst into flames. The suspect ran away but was eventually captured. A couple of hours later in northeast Houston, a driver trying to get away from police crashed into a mobile barbecue business, hitting several people. Two of them had to go to the hospital. The suspect now in jail facing, of course, numerous charges. They never get away. Well, a federal judge in Houston hears arguments today on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or it's otherwise known as DACA. The pol policy is for young people known as DREAMers. Many of them, even college students and above, they were brought here illegally as children and DACA protects against deportation and provides work permits. Texas and eight other states are seeking to end the Obama era program, claiming its terms violated the Constitution by going around Congress's authority on immigration laws. Earlier this year, the Supreme Court blocked the Trump administration's attempt to end DACA. But a new ruling against DACA could limit President-elect Joe Biden's ability to keep that program. A lot to come there and a lot of controversy surrounding it as well. Well, time is running out to ship packages for Christmas. If you've waited too long, <laughs> it's going to cost you if you want to get it there on time. If you ship today and want your packages to arrive by Christmas, you'll need to pay for a second day air at Fed by Fed at FedEx or UPS or anywhere else. UPS, U, the United States Postal Service Priority Mail Express is your safest choice as well. Their deadline is tomorrow, but that's also overnight, and that costs a huge sum. After a short turnaround, the new NBA season begins tonight. Teams will not play in that so-called bubble like they did at Disney World last season, and each team will play a shortened 72-game schedule. Most NBA teams will begin the season without fans in the audience, including the Rockets, who host the Thunder in their season opener tomorrow night. Now to NRG Park, where Precinct 1 Constable's office is giving away toys. Look at those stacks full of toys there in those crates. Santa dropped off the toys and asked the constable's office to distribute them. The giveaway begins at noon. All you have to do is to get a toy is bring your child, enter in at gate 12 at the North Stadium, uh, and then the, you'll be able to, well, eventually get your toys. This will go on until supplies run out. You can see there is a long line there and, of course, always limited toys. But we hope the best for those of you who need them. 
All right, let's turn to weather and find out how that beautiful sun is going to be warming us up today. Hello, Rachel. Yeah, it is absolutely gorgeous outside looking at a lot of sunshine. Eventually later we will start to see a little bit more cloud cover starting to make its way back on in, but can't complain in temperatures right now coming in in the 60s. Eventually we will warm up into the 70s as we head throughout the rest of this afternoon, but all in all some really gorgeous weather. So here's a breakdown of your headlines. What we are expecting this week. First off today, warm and sunny. If you like the warm temperatures get outside and enjoy it then tomorrow that's when our next cold front will make its way on in this will bring us some much cooler weather and also a chance for some scattered showers and storms and then behind that front that cooler air will really start to filter in just in time for Christmas but here's a closer look at what you can expect throughout the rest of the day today it's going to get warm we're expecting our high temperatures in the low 70s 71 degrees by 2 p.m. and then as we head into the later afternoon to evening hours going to start to see a little bit more cloud cover rolling on in we'll see those rain chances go up though into the overnight hours as well as into Wednesday and we'll take a closer look at those rain chances coming up. All right, very good. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate it. President Trump's last minute efforts to overturn results from the election. Laughable, some are calling it, but more on what he's said to be doing inside the White House as his administration comes to an end. An American teen on her way to court today in the Cayman Islands after violating COVID restrictions. Her family now speaking out about her decision to appeal her sentence back in a moment. Give a gift to yourself this holiday season. One that gives you accurate weather information. And breaking news wherever you go. On any of your connected devices. Big or small. Download the ABC 13 Houston app and stream Houston's news leader today. All right, back to that breaking news. Here's a tweet from the Houston Police Department. They investigate. They are, they are investigating the discovery of a woman's body on Lenore Street, which is in southeast Houston. Detectives tell us that she had been shot to death. We're going to keep a tab on this and bring you further information. We get live sky eye pictures as well. These coming from that scene right now, but you can see a lot of police activity. We appreciate Sky Eye always doing so much great work in uh, around the city as they fly around and look for things, scenes like this. But uh, a lot of police activity there on the scene. But we'll get more information about this woman found shot to death over there in southeast Houston area a little bit later on and as well on our news on our website, ABC13.com. Well, we haven't heard much from President Trump, Trump but sources tell us ABC News uh, tell ABC News that he is spending his last days in office focused on last, last ditch schemes to overturn the results of the election. As he has indicated before, he doesn't believe that uh, he lost the election. The president is said to be receiving a lot of pushback from Attorney General Bill Barr, who is stepping down, by the way, tomorrow, because he has indicated that there was no election fraud during this election. Barr and the president's own senior advisors are warning him against what they are calling outlandish requests that the president has made. Now, president is also talking to Sidney Powell. She is an attorney who Trump allies call, quote, flat out crazy. She's telling him to use his power to investigate a conspiracy theory about rigged voting machines, calling into question all of the voting machines and wanting to bring them in at least for examination. Mr. Trump also met with a group of hardline Republicans who offered to challenge the Electoral College vote when it is presented to Congress on January the 6th. But of course, the vast majority of people and even on both sides of the aisle, Republicans as well, just calling on President Trump to admit that he lost and concede. All right, now to that American teenager sentenced to prison in the Cayman Islands for violating COVID protocols to watch her boyfriend in a jet ski competition. Her family is now speaking out. ABC's Victor Okendo has much more. From paradise to prison, Skylar Mack waking up behind bars for a week now after breaking COVID-19 quarantine rules in the Cayman Islands. But this morning, the American teenager will appeal her sentence. But this is not about um, sympathy. It's about ensuring that the system operates fairly. The 18-year-old traveled to the Caribbean island on November 27th and was required to quarantine for 14 days. But according to officials, just two days and one negative COVID test later, she allegedly removed her wrist monitor and left quarantine to watch her boyfriend, professional jet ski racer, 24-year-old Vanjay Ramgeet, compete in a race seen here posted by the event organizers. 
The couple said to have interacted with others for more than seven hours without masks, forcing other families at that event to later quarantine. Both Mac and Ramgeet, who was charged with aiding and abetting, were detained and initially ordered to pay a fine and serve 40 hours of community service. But prosecutors appealed, calling the ruling too lenient. A higher court agreed, sentencing Mac to four months in prison. He's very overwhelmed. She hasn't eaten. Um, she's tried to eat um, a couple of times and she's gotten sick. Her grandmother says Mac tested negative before traveling and a few times since arriving on the island. I just want her home. I don't know how many more nights my whole family can, can go through this, you know, night after night after night. Closing your eyes and you see her in that in a cell somewhere and um, with nobody there to help her. It's just heartbreaking. Her grandmother even reached out to President Trump for help. She told us she got a response saying that Mr. Trump read the email and they have passed it along to the appropriate government agency. That would be the State Department and they tell us they are aware of the situation. At this point, her grandmother just wants her home before Christmas. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami Beach. All right, let's turn to weather now, and we had a nice cool morning, but meteorologist Rachel Breyers will have your forecast when we return right after the break. Well, it is shaping up to be another gorgeous day across southeast Texas. We are looking at lots of sunshine out there right now, and our temperatures are starting to warm up, already making our way up into the upper 60s and low 70s. And as we head into the rest of the afternoon, our temperatures will continue to rise up into the low 70s, and a few of us could actually rise up into the mid 70s. So if you like the warmer temperatures, take advantage of your day today. It is going to be gorgeous, and it is going to feel great outside. Looking at all of that sunshine continuing into the early afternoon, although later as we head into the, I would say late afternoon to early evening, that's when we could start to see a little bit more cloud cover trying to make its way on in. And then those clouds will continue to push in as we head into the overnight hours and as we head into Wednesday morning. Now, also as we head into Wednesday morning, that moisture, it's really going to start streaming in from the Gulf. And as it does, we could see a few light streamer showers in the morning. So tomorrow, first off, you do want to take the umbrella with you, but you want to take it with you in the morning as well, because it does look like we will see at least a few little light showers. Then as we head into the afternoon to evening, that's when our rain chances will go up even more as our next cold front starts to make its way into southeast Texas. Should make its way, I would say, into College Station, so into the Brazos Valley a little afternoon and then should continue down to the south, making its way into Houston, possibly around 5 to 6 p.m. And as this gets closer, we will see our rain chances go on up. We do have a chance for some scattered showers and storms. Now, it is not going to be a total washout for everybody tomorrow. We're looking at a 40% chance of rain. So a few of us will see rain, but not all of us, but still want to go ahead and take that umbrella with you as we head into Wednesday. Now, also do want to mention we are expecting a few thunderstorms and we cannot rule out a strong to severe storm. If we happen to see a severe storm, our main threat looks like it will be damaging wind gusts. So that's something we will continue to watch, but it does look like the higher risk of severe weather will remain off to the east of Houston. And you can see even just looking at future track, those colors getting a little bit brighter as they head over towards Louisiana. But with that being said, we will continue to keep a very close eye on those showers and storms. But then behind that front, that cooler air is really going to start filtering in and it's also going to be pretty windy. So if you anything outdoors that's going to get blown around easily, you want to secure that before this front rolls on through. You can see your future wind gusts as that front pushes on through anywhere between 30 to 40 miles per hour and the gusty winds will continue as we head into the day on Thursday and Thursday it's going to be quite chilly. Our temperatures as we head into Thursday morning should be up into the upper 30s, but it's actually going to feel like our temperatures are in the upper 20s and low 30. So gear up. It will be very chilly as we head into the second half of the week, just in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas. So on Christmas Eve in the afternoon, looking at a temperature of 54 degrees, lots of sunshine on Christmas in the morning, near freezing temperatures, high temperature on Christmas, 60 degrees and also expecting mostly clear skies. So really nice weather coming up for your holiday forecast. And then as we head into this next weekend, we'll start to see those temperatures warm back up and rain chances pop back up into the forecast at the end of next weekend. We'll be right back. Great act of kindness here. A sheriff's deputy in California busy spearheading a toy drive for a children's shelter. Thanks to Jeopardy, uh, Deputy Josh Broadwater and his donors, the kids who call this place home will receive plenty of Christmas gifts. Look at all those things in there. Deputy Broadwater, by the way, has a special connection to his home. 
to this home 47 years ago. Deputy Broadwater was only a day old when he was abandoned in a gas station restroom. Attached to him was a note that read, please love me. This very same children's home took in Deputy Broadwater and helped him find a new family. Deputy says he loves to bring toys to these children because he's been in their same situation and in fact at that very same shelter. What a beautiful story. Nice Christmas story. And you can see those newspaper, newspaper clippings of that event so long ago. All right, Rachel, what kind of Christmas week will we have? Well, I mean, no matter what type of weather you like, you're going to get it this week warm at the beginning and then cooler at the end. Very good. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Christmas week, everyone. Enjoy it.